we are going to be looking at matrix matrices and how we can use symbol lab to solve for it. So if we go to symbollab.com, we are going to have a page that looks something similar to like this. I'll just copy this and actually paste and go inside of here. And we can see it's going to look something like this. Uh, now if we want a, and there's a bunch of different kind of ways we can use calculators here. Now there's even a section that's dedicated just for matrix calculators. It looks a little bit different than this. If you want the exact one, I guess it's symbollab.com slash solver. And then it's gonna take you to this. So symbollab.com is a super basic one like this. And if we have a slash solver, it's going to look something like this. And we can expand it um, and it looks very similar, but the compact gives us the matrices right here. So this is the only difference, so you get the full and you compact. Now, if we have some problem that gives us something like this, where we have our X, we have Y's, and we have Z's, that is a lot to deal with. So instead of actually you know, going through and solving for X, solving for Y, solving for Z, what we can do is make a matrix for it. We come over up here, so it would be this one right here, we would select our matrix size. So for the left hand side, we can see it's three by three. So we would click three by three and this would come up. We would then fill it in with one, zero, negative three, then four, four, one, zero, two, three regarding this matrix. Now we know we have X, Y, and Z. So we're gonna multiply this by a matrix of X, Y, and Z. This is going to be a one or a three by one. And then we set it equal to everything that we have over here, which is the 11, 26, negative two. And it's gonna give us this result. So that's how we would do matrices in symbol lab. And an example is for an engineering problem that I have done for this second part right here. When we have our question written out, um, it's nice to just be able to plug this into calculator, uh, substituting X for I1 and Y for I2. And that way we can solve for a specific variable.